Okay, so today's topic is, is buying a property when you're pregnant a good idea? Um, my name is Max Phelps, I'm a money coach with Golden Eggs and I'm uh, joined here today by Tammy who's on the other end of the call. How are you Tammy? I'm well thanks Max, how are you? Good, thank you. We'll jump straight into it today because I know that we've got, uh, we're in a bit of a hurry. So the, the question from your perspective please. Yes, so I've got a family friend, uh, she's actually expecting, she's, you know, her due date's in a couple of months. Basically, they're on the hunt for a house, they're renting in a little apartment, a one-bedroom uh, apartment, she just doesn't know if she should buy, and it got me thinking, you know, what, what's the way to go when you're expecting a, your first baby? Should you buy, should you continue renting? Yeah, so there's, there's two separate parts to this and I'm probably going to change that to three later but let's stick to two for now. The first one is um, people, there's a lot of change going on when pregnancy especially with the first baby and you know that you're going to have another human in the household to, to look after and take care of and obviously you're worried the space is too small and so often it's when people transition from an apartment to a, a house is when they're expecting their first baby. However, the problem is, is that the changes that are going on now with having the first baby or even having the second baby are one of a life stage that we go through. And the second, the next life stage after that is when those little tiny bumps turn into giant big children that then occupy an even bigger space. And yeah. so what most people look for when they're pregnant is a small place with a backyard that their little kid can run around in. Unfortunately, in property, 10 years is a short time um, because of the costs of buying and selling property. And so the danger is if you buy a property like a, a, a townhouse or a small terrace for the, for the little tackers to run around in and then they get bigger, then what happens? And so I guess the, the solution that we normally recommend or we would we'd advocate for is thinking about that next stage and maybe looking for a property that either that could be extended either up or out. And so I would favor something with a bit more space to do that with over a townhouse which is fully self-contained but no real room to grow, which right. means you're gonna to have to move out in a few years time. Second issue is, can you borrow money if your household is reliant on two incomes and suddenly you know that you're gonna be going through maternity leave or maybe paternity leave as well, is, is that possible? And the great news is it's very possible, but what we need to understand is when you go back to work, if you're gonna take maternity leave, is when you go back to work, are you gonna go back to work full time? Or is it gonna be like three days a week or four days a week or something like that? And it's important to not plan on having 100% of your income at full time, but at the same time thinking it would be nice to spend an extra day or two a week um, with the little one. And then there's the extra costs involved in having a little baby. And so again, normally with that, when we're looking at the, we're looking at the income, it's also worth understanding are you gonna to need to spend money on childcare or something else in order to cover the fact that you're going to work three or four days a week. For some people it's not an issue, they can work from home. For other people it means that potentially there's a drop in income and an increase in expenses. And we need to count the new income and expenses when working out what you can afford rather than your current income as a single couple or a couple with one child at full um, working capacity and then find that you're in a debt which you, you, you're gonna struggle with. Right. And, and my next question is, let's say you have your first child and, and you think it's better off uh, renting for a little while. At what stage should, should you start thinking to, okay, we've got to move into a home and buy a home? Is it when you're on the way to your second baby or is it when the toddler starts running around? <laughs> well, that's a good good question. So for a lot of people, um, you know, I, I went through having a first child in a two bedroom apartment and, and actually babies take up next to no space because you, they pretty much stay where you put them. And so you can have them in, the, in your own bedroom with you. Uh, you can put them in a cot. You can put them in a little space in the corner and it's fine. Once they start toddling around, that's when the apartment space becomes a little bit cramped. 
And it's you. It's often when the the first one is at the toddlery stage that people also think about having a second child, and now they know that there's going to be not enough space for the for the family of a, with with a, with a couple of kids. So, right. my tip would be to stay where you are for as long as possible, um, whether you're renting or whether you own a two bedder, um, and that could be until the first one is maybe eighteen months old. Um, but when you need to buy is probably when that either second one is coming or the first one is starting to toddle around and looking for some more space to run. Uh, right, of course. But keep in mind the space to run is only for little kids. Most places with a little backyard are completely unsuitable for eight-year-olds. Yeah, that's right. What can an eight-year-old do in a, in a, a small terrace backyard? Yeah, I've got little siblings, one of them six years old, and it's like he takes over the whole house, so you're completely right. Yeah, so so even a garden, so, you know, and that's as early as six, and if you've got an 18-month-old now and, and, and another one on the way, then it could be another four and a half years, and the backyard is too small for both of them, and then what yeah. are you going to do? Um, right. Then you suddenly realise it's better to be closer to schools, better to be closer to parks, and then have room to extend should those six eight-year-olds turn into 12-year-olds and uh, suddenly second bathroom and second living spaces become uh, more valuable so um, yeah buying when you're pregnant we often see lots of people out buying when they're pregnant uh, so it's quite common um, but just keep in mind the changing needs are going to keep changing and the income is something you just kind of need to play around with does that make sense Yes, and it's definitely possible. I thought um, maternity leave would be a big issue, but it's not, as you said. It, it, it's an issue for some lenders, but we're brokers. We can deal with, with anyone. So see a good broker. Any good broker will put you in touch with a lender that, that has a maternity leave policy. They will always ask for a return to work letter that says when you're coming back to work, what your salary is going to be when you come back, and how many hours or days a week are you going to be working for that. Uh, as long as those three things are covered off, then we've got plenty of lenders that will give you the money. All right, perfect. So we'll wrap that one up for now. So um, thanks for listening. Any more questions, please let Tammy know or, or get in touch with us. Otherwise, always remember to be genuine, have fun, and stay curious.